It's a new day. It's a new life for me. All right, guys. So today we're talking about and the brand I'm new Sony A7 IV. Let's go. And here it is, guys. The new Sony A7 IV. I've been really, really looking forward to getting my hands on this piece of equipment slash gear here ever since it was announced. And I'm gonna get into those reasons why it's the perfect hybrid camera, especially for me, right after we roll the intro. Stay tuned. All right, baby, thank you. Thank you very much. So you have three takes, you can just see which one went smooth and you can cut to whichever wording you find most Thank you. I like the last wording most. Thank you. It all work, but still. Thank you very much, baby. You're welcome. All right guys, so welcome back. I am talking about why I got myself the brand new Sony a7 IV. First of all, it was a bit of an adventure getting this into the country. As soon as this camera came out, I knew I had to get my hands on it. At that point in time, my mom was heading to the States. And what I did was do a quick calculation as to what it would be, you know, what it would take to get this camera in at the most cost efficient price. <laughs> why, why are things so expensive bringing things into Trinidad and Tobago? It's so expensive. By the way, this carries an MSRP of 2,500 US dollars. And as soon as custom sees that you're bringing something of that value inside here, it's all... They see dollar bills. Honestly, it's really expensive. I think it would be cheaper, in my opinion, to literally travel to the States buy your equipment and then come back to trinidad because customs on these things are ridiculous basically my mom was traveling to the states and she kind of smuggled this into trinidad for me i'm not saying like smuggled smuggled but that's what you have to do so basically i went ahead and got myself a sony a7 IV and a sigma 24 to 70 lens now i do have other sony lenses but this lens here is going to be my all-in-one and live pretty much on this camera. I'll do a full review on this later on. It's performing really well so far. Now, why did I upgrade? Basically, I upgraded because since the start of my professional career, I pretty much stuck to exclusively crop sensor bodies. I started with the A6000, then I moved on to the A6300, then I got the A6400. Actually, this is not even my first full frame camera because I actually used the A7R. The A7R, the first one. Um, it was, it was decent, you know, but I had pretty much had to get rid of it and got the A6400. So I did a little backtracking there. I even had the ATD. Those cameras perform really well depending on what you use them for. And though other cameras have come and gone, the A7 III, the A7S II, the A7S III, I believe this camera right here is the next logical step for me. It's the best hybrid camera for me personally, and I'm gonna discuss some reasons why. I'm a hybrid shooter, and thankfully, this camera affords me the ability to have different settings for both photo and video. So they don't carry over settings, so it's not a huge thing where I have to keep fiddling and fumbling over what settings to change when I'm switching between photo and video. I can just simply flip a switch. Secondly, if you know any of my work, you'd realize I use a lot of slow motion. I shoot 60, I shoot 120, and I shoot 240 frames when I'm using other cameras like the A7S III, which I do have the opportunity to play with sometimes. Yeah, but this here, 4K 24, 4K 60 at a crop, which I'm gonna get back to in a little bit, 1080p at 120 frames per second, and in 422 10-bit color, which then will give me a little more latitude when color grading. Now, like I said earlier, the 4K footage from this particular camera here does come with a Super 35 crop. That means it's gonna crop in on the sensor just a little bit. Actually, it could be significant enough for other people for it to be a deal breaker. And this is something that for a lot of international creators has become like a huge sticking point, like a huge point for them to make like, oh, uh, Sony has crippled the camera, obviously, because it has given it a 4K 60 frame per second crop. Personally, I find that's a lot of nonsense because if this is the tool that is for you, you're going to use it as intended. And you're gonna find ways to overcome, quote unquote, Pain points. Personally, what I've done to overcome this little setback, I have APS-C lenses that would afford me the ability to go a little wider and then we're right back to shooting wide. So there's no issue at all. That's one thing I love about my Caribbean creators. We simply know how to make use of the equipment we're given. <laughs> Just a quick aside and caveat I should mention, if you want to shoot 1080p footage 
a 10-bit color, you're gonna need to switch to SNQ modes because it's not available on the normal modes. I don't know why Sony did it, but it is what it is and this is what we have right now. And also to get access to higher frame rates and higher color and higher everything, basically you need to be shooting with a V90 SD card or higher. Now, let's not forget about the photo features of the A7 IV. This camera has a 33 megapixel sensor that will allow me to crop in and recompose just in case I need it. Now, coming from APS cameras, that's gonna be a huge step up for me. As my friend Ravi would say, it's always good to get it in camera, but sometimes it can't be helped, right? So you try your best, and just in case you need a little more cropping in and a little more flexibility in post, well, it's gonna allow me to do that. I'm actually really looking forward to the fully touchscreen menu and system of this camera, you know, because other Sony cameras didn't allow you to touch the menu and you know other little things they only pretty much allow touch to focus but this is fully touch screen and i'm really looking forward to that now there are two other features i'm going to talk about with the sony a7 IV that are exclusive to the sony a7 IV at the moment because they may or may not come to other cameras with future software updates but they are focus mapping and focus breathing compensation. Now I have used focus breathing compensation a little bit. It's gonna prevent that awkward, you know, pull in and pull out that you see in the edges of the camera frame sometimes. It's gonna crop in a little bit and then, you know, try and alleviate some of that hunting, basically. It looks like hunting. And with focus mapping, basically, it's just gonna give you a color representation of what is in focus. What is in focus will be colorless and then in the foreground and the background, there's gonna be different colors. Basically showing you what's in focus. It's a pretty, creative and helpful ways and i think it's available on other sony cameras but don't quote me on that now i'm really looking forward to taking all my productions to the next level with this particular camera here it has actually gotten me really excited about you know creating again like i remember as soon as i made the order for this camera i was just so giddy and looking forward to actually having it in my hand and you know starting to create again so any piece of equipment that can get you excited about something you already love well that's something you can really put a price on can you the 33 megapixels of this camera is good for photo and it's actually pretty decent in low light too so i'm really looking forward to using it in weddings and you know actually not being scared to you know shoot in low light situations anymore so i'm looking forward to you know shooting in low light in the weddings and whatever situation that may come my way and i'm really just excited to create finally guys if you know anything about me you know i'm going to customize this baby here so i'm looking forward to getting a little skin to cover it and the sigma lens so i'm going to make another video and moving forward i'm pretty much just going to record what i want to record the days for the typical vlog on this channel are kind of over so I, there's a lot of things I'm passionate about, videography, gaming. I'm just looking forward to making content about those things. I'm actually just going to make content I want to make. Put it out on a semi-regular basis and then see where it goes from there. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. Looking forward to the next set of videos that I'm going to be customizing this and the lens and other little knickknacks and stuff like that. I'm going to put a cage on it as well. So yeah, I am looking forward to making more of this stuff and I do hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was informative. Hope it helps you make an informed decision if you want to get something like this. So guys, if you enjoyed it, like it, share it in your little forums and pages and you know, share it to your friends and stuff like that if you liked it and you feel somebody could benefit from watching something like this. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate your time that you have spent here with me and my new little baby here that I'm looking forward to using a lot. So guys, again, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you in the next video.